This is the Marantz PMD670. It's an early solid state field recorder and you can see from its appearance that it actually follows along the line of a whole load of portable cassette decks that Marantz produced over the previous 30 odd years. The field recording units were made to be simple, simple to operate. Not every journalist was very good at using a recorder. They are more interested in actually getting the interview. And in practice, in the heat of the moment, it was difficult to concentrate on fiddling with controls. So when this design came out, it was obvious that uh, there were an awful lot of adjustable tweaks on it. And you can see from the plethora of de dedicated switches on the top of this thing that uh, it takes a while to uh, set up. However, quite deviously, uh, Marantz went out of the way to make this journalist proof in the following way. And this is it, a simple plastic lid. And what you do, is to screw that in place on top of there, and screws are actually supplied. And then it's journalist proof because all the field user has to do is engage record with a big red sliding switch at the front and they're in business. So all the format controls and things to do with monitoring have been set by the station engineer before they go out or set by the journalist themselves but it uh, avoids anything being accidentally uh, messed with in the field. The menu system in this device is uh, peculiarly arcane, not intuitive in the slightest. There appear to be two different ways of getting into menus. I won't even go through those, it's not worth it here. Anybody who has one of these things will have the proper owner's handbook and uh, it does go through it in some detail. But it's not a thing you would remember if you didn't use it for a few months or weeks even. On the front of the device, let's see if we can get a, a view of the front of the device. A big LCD display there. And by holding down the button that says light on the front, uh, control for more than about five seconds, the backlight stays on throughout the recording, which is useful. Um, sometimes these things go on for five seconds and then time out, which is a bit frustrating. The thing is actually recording at the moment and um, what you're listening to is actually the sound recorded by the device using a Rode NTG1 microphone with phantom power. There's an overload uh, indicator there and I have at some point whilst fiddling around here gone over. So I can reset the margin there and we'll see what happens. There's a rather strange microphone input sensitivity to this device. Uh, it's quite sensitive in its sensitive mode, but there's a 20 dB pad. Now that's a bit over the top. I think a 10 dB would have been better because you go from being too sensitive to really not sensitive enough and then you start to run into noise problems when you turn the gain up. So a bit of a strange device. This thing has a variety of recording modes, both in terms of the sources and the formats that are recorded. The sources are XLR microphone inputs on the side with phantom power, globally switched for the two microphones. You can record just one of those or as mono or both as stereo. There's also built-in microphones, rather crude built-in microphone on this thing and also you can record from the line in. You can also record digitally in, there's SPDIF in and out, which uh, I've never had to use. Let's have a look around the rest of the device. Okay, so here's the input output panel on the right hand side of the unit. First of all, there's a remote socket there, you can use that with the closing contacts to do automatic switch on, switch off remotely. You've got RCA Phono sockets for line in, line out. Then a couple of XLR connectors, lockable XLR connectors there, with a global phantom power switch on the right hand side. I'm actually recording this in completely mono form, 
the single microphone going into the left input. This is the opposite side, the left hand as you look at the front panel and we've got an external power input on the left. You'll notice a, a charge lamp now that will only charge a specific battery pack that's uh, available. I never possessed that thing, but a specific battery pack that's available for this device. And uh, that's a NICAD pack. Uh, had the right contacts on the battery pack. I, I'd say I've never had that, so I just use the ordinary battery holder. I'll talk about batteries in a minute. But obviously it doesn't charge batteries when they're in the standard holder. There's a, a miniature USB port there, but it's uh, USB 1 or 1.1, so it's extremely slow. That's 12 megabits per second. It's not going to uh, be very useful for transferring large files. Consequently, um, you'd have to take the card out and put it in a reader. You also see uh, digital SPDIF coaxial in and out there. Also, there's a, uh, a carrying strap which attaches very, very securely to this device. Again, showing its uh, use potentially for um, a reporter slung around the shoulders. We'll just open the door for the card and we'll see here that the... Oh, no, I won't eject it at the moment because uh, it'll stop the recording. <laughs> So that's a compact flash card and will only take cards up to 2 gig. It certainly won't handle anything higher than that. And therefore it's a bit of a limitation because these things are pretty rare these days. You can get 8 gig, 16 gig, whatever uh, compact flash cards are next to nothing. But you're into historical territory with a, a 1 gig. But uh, there's a couple, I've got a couple that be supplied with this unit. Notice that here there's a blanking plug in here, but if you're to remove that, um, you can put a screw in and that will, again, it's a tamper-proof thing, stop uh, your users getting in and messing about with the cards. Notice on the front of this thing, look at the, the shape here. You know, that's where, that's where you'd expect a cassette to go in. So that's the kind of historical design that this thing uh, has adopted. But down here we have the actual control panel and um, boy there's a lot going on there you can record in uh, wave mp3 mp2 format strangely i don't know whether that was really very popular but uh, that's what you could do quite versatile in that respect you start recording in wave form you're not gonna get much recording on a one gig card there's a certain amount of editing available as well, but again, you would always do that back at home on a computer. The final thing to look at with this is batteries. Now, battery consumption on this is absolutely diabolical. Uh, the thing takes eight, yes, I did say eight. It takes eight AA cells, uh, either alkaline or nickel metal hydride. But boy, this thing sure gets through batteries. So let's look at the battery compartment. Okay, here's the battery compartment on the back. And uh, it's a bit stiff at the moment because the batteries in there are high capacity and they're quite chunky. So it's probably better to get slightly slimmer standard capacity batteries. And there's the battery pack. So this thing, there's your eight batteries. And that is why... I guess most users would go and buy a spare battery pack. Another 20 quid, thank you very much. Um, believe me, if you're recording a, a classical concert, you'd probably want to change battery pack after the first half because they really don't last very long in this device. Obviously, it comes with a mains adapter, which is fine, but that's kind of irrelevant for a field recorder. I'm going to compare this thing now with three different card sizes. First of all, the standard 1 gig that's been used in the first part of this test. There we are, 
perfectly normal. Absolutely fine. It's a two gig card. And again, perfectly normal. In fact, it looks like this one's already been used for recording a few sessions. Switch that off. Now, here's the difficult one. This is a four gig compact flash card. Let's see what this one says. First of all, it's taking an awful long time to boot up. I'm going to get the light on here. It says you need format on PC. Well, the answer is it has been formatted on PC, so clearly um, it just doesn't like a 4 gig card. So there we are. We know where the limits are. And that is the Marantz PMD 670 field recorder.